Hello and welcome to Datacast Solutions Introduction to NIME for the Data Analyst. In this chapter I'm going to walk you through an overview of the actual software and show you what all the major components are for the Windows. When you first launch NIME, the first thing it's going to ask you to do is to choose a workspace. The workspace is simply a directory on any drive with sufficient space for you to store your workflows. It, all of your workflows will be stored as a subfolder underneath this directory on your machine. This is what the nine, primary NIME screen looks like, and we're going to go through essentially what each section of this is for. In the top left corner, we have the NIME Explorer, where you can browse all of the workflows you've created. Just below that is the Workflow Coach, where NIME offers suggestions for the next node you might want to use. Below that is the most important, the Node Repository. This is a list of all the nodes that you have available and the extensions you've installed, and we'll show how to use them. Next is the Workflow Editor, where you're going to be dragging and dropping nodes to create your individual workflows. To the far right is the node description, where every node or workflow you highlight will show a description within this frame to show what it does. The outline view is used when you have a workflow that spills beyond the visible area of the workflow editor. It shows you from a very high level perspective which portion of the view you're actually looking at. and You'll be able to zoom in and out. And finally, the council, one of the most important areas, again, because every piece of information that NIME wants to tell you, every error condition, etc., is going to be displayed here. So this is the principal way NIME communicates to you faults and failures, so you need to watch this area. So with that as our introduction, let's go ahead and detail into each one of these areas and look at exactly how each one of them works. So let's go ahead and let's take a look up at the NIME Explorer and look at this in more detail. We will talk about the example workflows and the NIME Hub in a future chapter. For now, your local workspace. This is the directory that you first, when you started NIME, you were asked for your NIME workspace directory. That is mapped to what you call here the local workspace. Underneath here are any work groups that you have defined. And if I right click over here, I can create a new group, which is just another folder. So you can structure your, your workflows into a folder structure so you can save them in a meaningful, logical way. And underneath each workflow, I can go into the examples and basic examples. And I'm going to open, in this case, for example, I could open the building a simple classifier. What's meaningful to note is behind the scenes, if you notice when I take a look at the D Drive 9 workspace, which is where I open my 9 platform up to, you can see that each folder in my local workspace maps to a specific directory of the exact same name. So there is the example workflows, basic examples, and building a simple classifier, exactly as you saw them. And what you'll notice is that each node inside of each workflow stores a directory underneath there. That's where the configuration of the node is stored and any data that might be stored at each individual step. We'll talk about more about that when we're working with workflows. Next, I mentioned the workflow coach. And what the workflow coach's job is, is to essentially try to guess through AI what the next node is you might be needing in your process. Um, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a real big fan of this because I know the node I need. I don't need it to guess, and I've never found it particularly helpful at guessing for me. Um, so as a general rule of thumb, I tend to close this node and not keep it open because I prefer the space available to the Explorer and the node repository. So if you find this isn't helpful to you, you just do what I do here and just close this view, and it won't be visible anymore. So the next area I'd like to talk about is the node repository, probably the most important, because this has all of the nodes that are available to you and what you can do with them. 
Now you have a few different mechanisms. You can browse this yourself. And initially that's probably honestly what you're going to have to do. You'll have to say, I want to do some type of IO. So am I trying to read data or am I trying to write data? And once I read data, is it an Excel spreadsheet of a, a CSV reader? Um, am I trying to read images? Um, this is basically how most people tend to find nodes. And when they want to manipulate something, they'll come in and say, I want to manipulate is either the row or the table or the column. Well, if I want to do column level manipulation, then am I trying to split or combine them or transform them, change their case, handle missing values? So all of this is all set around the idea that you need to browse and find nodes. Once you start working with Nine more and more, you're going to come very familiar with the standard nodes that you use all the time. So in the search box, if I type CSV, I get everything I need. Here's my CSV reader, CSV writer. Um, and you'll just begin to learn to look and say, I can look for PDF and say, oh, here's how to convert a table to a PDF, how to parse a PDF. Um, write out to a PDF. There are lots of different, you know, options that are going to be available to you, and you just, you'll just get to know how to use these modules. Um, but for now, just finding them is the key thing. So, if you're trying to look for Excel and say, look, boy, here's every node that starts with XLS, um, all the Excel readers, sheet appenders, and and everything that I want to work with. So, the node repository. Once you have a node. It is simple as taking this node and dragging it up onto the screen. If I drag this node and drag it up onto the screen into my workflow editor, voila, my node is now up here and part of it. So we'll talk more about the workflow editor in just a few moments. The outline view at the bottom, as you'll notice when at the top of the screen, in the workflow editor up here, you see that the workflow I built has scroll bars. It's beyond the physical limits of the, of the workflow editor space that I've set aside. And what the outline view allows you to see is everything that you can't see. So it's basically a, a small capture area. So you can actually move the, by clicking and dragging, you can move this around and actually see the workflow. This may not seem useful, um, but when you build really, really large workflows and they tend to get very large very quickly, um, navigating them around this becomes helpful. But we're gonna also learn some techniques to use components and meta nodes to make your workflow much more manageable and much more readable. Since I've just opened nine, the startup menu down at the bottom, the startup messages, excuse me, are actually being displayed. So any information when you first start up nine will show up in the console area as a separate tab. Once you've resolved or handled or managed anything that has to be as part of startup, you can close that. This leaves open just the console and any messages that your workflow has produced are going to be visible in the console. So this is going to be a central area you're going to use regularly. There is, however, one other area of the console I like to, to open up and keep available on a very regular basis, and that's for managing and monitoring the flow variables that are being used throughout your workflow. So I'm going to zoom out here again, and I'm going to take you up instead into the view menu, and I'm going to ask you to open the other views, and then we're going to scroll down to the nine views, and I open the node monitor. And you'll notice now the node monitor is in a different, is an additional tab. I can still click on the console to see the tab, but the node monitor is additional tab. This is where you'll see the values, the names and values of all your variables uh, that you're using in your workflow. So when we get into workflow variables, you'll understand the, the meaning and value of this node monitor. Um, but for now, it's just something I always keep on, uh, whether I'm using the console or not. Now, one area also that a number of people I see will turn off from time to time, whether you choose to or not is fine, is the description. I use it regularly. Um, the description error over here on the right is what allows me to see the definition of any module that I click on. So 
Within the Node repository, for example, if I click on the Excel Sheet Reader, this is a description of what that node is. And if I scroll down through it, it shows me what the parameters are and what file inputs or outputs it might be expecting. Um, so I can scroll through here and get a definition for everything there is and what the ports are. And this is, this is a description of the node. Also, if you notice, when I click on, like, over here in the NIME Explorer, I click on Building a Simple Classifier. This is also a description of what this node is. And you can actually edit this description. So if you want to put descriptions on your workflows, and that's going to be very useful when you publish them to the hub, you can actually edit and type a title and a description. You can place tags, um, uh, links, etc., to them. And we're even going to show you how to eventually add some custom graphics to them and save this information or cancel out if you don't make any updates to it. So it's another way of just documenting who worked on this workflow and why. This, of course, leads us now to the actual workflow editor, this area in the center of the screen. I'm going to close the sample workflow that I have here open right now and I don't want to save any of the changes that I have made. And I'm going to go ahead and under the training, I'm going to right click over here and I'm going to create a new work group and I'm going to call it custom class one. Doesn't matter. It's just a folder that's underneath the training folder. And now I'm going to right click over here and I'm going to tell it that I want to create a new workflow and I'm going to call it Scott Sample 1. And again, if this were something that I really wanted to be useful and intended to reuse, I'd come in here and edit it and say, let's talk about what it is so other people looking at my work later will know what to do with it. But for now, this is a blank workflow. This concludes the introduction to the NIME Analytics platform. Now we're going to start walking through individual node types and categories of groups and start explaining how to read files and manipulate your data and working our way right up into predictive models. This concludes this chapter of the class. Feel free to move on to the next chapter.